Friends and colleagues, welcome to Artlands Victoria. I'm not going to lie, I've practiced saying that a few times uh, over the last couple of years. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, my name is Joe Tui. I'm the Executive Director and CEO of Regional Arts uh, Victoria. Um, we're joined on stage by our Auslan interpreters, um, Mim and Therese, who are going to be helping us through, uh, the, through this evening's proceedings. So please give them a warm uh, round of applause as well. I begin firstly by thanking the Jar Jar Wurrung for that extraordinary welcome and opening ceremony at Rosalind uh, Park to kick off day one of Artlands Victoria, a day that we've themed on country. I acknowledge that over the coming days we will share knowledge, trade resources and exchange gifts on the land of the Jar Jar Wurrung during this time of, of ceremony and gathering. The, frame land, uh, the framework for Artlands Victoria uh, has been drawn from and inspired by the statement by the Jar Jar Wurrung in their clan's country plan. And you can read more about this in your program and daily guide. And there's also copies of the Jar Jar Wurrung uh, plan uh, out in the registration area as well. So to elders, past, present and future, I offer my uh, heartfelt respect. And I ask you to join me in extending that same respect as well as your generous applause as we launch into our first keynote today to be led by Trent Nelson and Rodney Carter, Chairperson and CEO respectively of the Jar Jar Wurrung Clan of Original Corporation. We're joined on stage by Auntie Faye Carter and Beck Phillips. Please make them feel very, very welcome. Wow. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> G'day. Hi. That's a family. That's a family sign. So your family now. <laughs> the people up the top or just down here? Just filled the bottom space. Oh, look at that. Aren't you lucky? Really intimate now. Rodney? You've got an Thanks. advantage over us because you can see us and we really can't see you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've like seen that. a lot of Trent earlier. They have. Yeah. Probably <laughs> too much, <laughs> actually, by the way. Just put some photos up of you, aren't Do you want to um, share the country plan? Yeah. Oh, the statement for the people? Yeah. Oh. Okay. You're on? Yeah. You put the step around. Thank you. I think I'm right. <laughs> I chose to come and speak to you at the lectern because it makes me feel more important than that. <laughs> and I'm making a joke to overcome my nerves. <laughs> Before I introduce myself, I just want to tell you a bit about my digging stick. I bought it with me, not that I'm going to go digging for Murnong yams, but my eldest granddaughter, Natasha, made it for me over the last week. So I wanted to let her know how important it was to me to have it with me tonight. Oh, could you hold it over there? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a servant here. <laughs> so I've just got to find where I am. And I hope I've got the right book. Yes, I have. Oh. Okay. I'm an 83-year-old senior Jajwurrung elder. I was involved in 2011 to 2013 as a member of the Jajwurrung negotiating team with the State of Victoria, which resulted in Jajwurrung receiving a recognition and settlement agreement. The negotiations were extremely emotional 
preventing us from addressing the real injustices due to the 1975 Anti-Discrimination Act. My saving grace because of this was the state signing off on a recognition statement. I will read part of the statement to you. Time do does not permit me to read it all. I suggest that you read the full statement at some time. <laughs> I'll just show you how, <laughs> how big it is. Okay. okay, so you wouldn't want me standing here reading the whole of that. So I've picked out parts to read to you. The state recognises that the Jajarwaram people are the traditional owner group for the country covered by this recognition and settlement agreement. Aboriginal peoples have lived in the part of Australia known as Victoria for more than a thousand generations. The people belonging to the country of the recognition and settlement agreement area through bloodline and kinship are known as the Jara, people of the area. Over time, many Jara have come to identify as Jajawuru. It means, Jaja means yes, yes, Wurung means to speak, which relates to the collective language group. Jara spoke the Jajawuru language for the purpose of this recognition and settlement agreement. The people have resolved to be known as the Jajawuru. The Jajawuru ancestors are recorded as having had 16 or more clans with smaller dialects, similar dialects, and are traditionally part of the Kulin Nation alliance of tribes in common with other Kulin peoples, Bunjil, the wedge-tailed eagle and Wa the crow form the moieties of the traditional patrilineal kinship system. The state recognises that the Jajawurrung have a special relationship with their country, which is of great significance to them. In the Jajawurrung worldview, Dreaming stories of Jandak, which is country, and Jajawurrum date back to the creation of these lands and all within them. Jajawurrum evolved with Jandak, and Jandak has been shaped and nurtured by the tra traditional way of life of the Jajawurrum people and their ancestors, reflecting principles embedded in kinship language, spirituality, and Bunjil's law. Bunjil is a creative being who bestows Jajawurrung people with the laws and ceremonies that ensure the continuation of life. Jajawurrung people know Mindy, the giant serpent, as the keeper and enforcer of Bunjil's law. Jajawurrung country is a cultural landscape that is more than just tangible on objects. Imprinted in it are the dreaming stories, law, totemic relationships, songs, ceremonies and ancestral spirits, which give it life and significant value to the Jajawurrung people. This values Jajawurrung people hold for their country are shaped from their belief systems that all things have a murup spirit. Water, birds, plants, animals, rocks and mountains. Jajawurrung people see all the land and its creatures in a holistic way. Interconnected with each other and with the people. Prior to European colonisation, all natural places within Jajawurrung country were well known, had a name and song, 
and was celebrated as part of country and culture. Today, Jajaran proudly survive. They continue to practice their culture and customs and uphold the obligations of Bunjil's law. Jajawarung people experience a close cultural, spiritual, physical, social, historical and economic relationship with the land and waters that makes up their country. I just feel a little bit emotional saying that. The state recognises the traditional and cultural association with Jajawarung people to their country today. This recognition and settlement agreement binds the state of Victoria and the Jajawarung people to a meaningful partnership founded on mutual respect. It is a means by which Jajawarung culture and traditional practices and the unique relationship of Jajawarung people to their traditional country are recognised, strengthened, protected and promoted for the benefit of all Victorians now and into the future. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Next. So I'll tell you a story about Jajaran country and where we, our boundaries are and our borders. So Jajaran territory extends from Mount Franklin down in the south and the towns of Creswick and Dalesford in the southeast to Castlemaine, Malden, then to Bendio in the east, that side. Bort in the north. Donald in the northwest and Navari Hill, Mount of Oka in the west. Making the southwest boundary along that side of our country, our territory encompasses the Bendigo and Queen's Goldfields and the Loddon and Navoka rivers as the watersheds. Hundreds of years ago, our country was mostly covered in open forests and woodlands, providing us with plants and animals that we use for food, medicine, shelter and customary practices. Today though our country has vastly changed. It still holds many important values. Our box island bark forests don't occur everywhere else, anywhere else. Important tucker, medicine species can still be found out in our country. They're still there. Eels, mussels, crays, fish like Murray Cod, yellow belly are still in our rivers. Emu, goanna, possum, Kangaroo, wallaby and rabbit have been sustainably used on this country for thousands of years and continue to be important to us as a food source. We use local plants like lamandra, saltbush, nardu, kumbangi, wattle, red gum and chocolate lilies. Our country is now also valued by other people, other cultures, European and Asian cultural heritage right here where you sit. It's very strong in this part of Bendigo. We have a lot of, uh, you would have seen that the um, Asian museum we have here with the Chinese dragon and, and their heritage as well as European heritage. You can see it as you walk down the streets. Um, but the other big thing that's impacted on our country is the gold mining history of the region, which continues to influence the recreational pursuits of prospecting and fossicking that are practiced today. Local industries, including beekeeping, forestry, agriculture and tourism, depend on the natural resources of our country provides. Caring for our country is this living essence that is shared between our people and place. It is vital for maintaining our culture. Passing down our traditional knowledge is a seminal way in which we transmit Jajaran culture heritage to the younger generations and it's how we have maintained our cultural identity over the past of passage of time. 
This practice is primary responsibility of Jadaram men and women. We teach stories of pre-contact origin, the correct way to engage with the country. The importance of revisiting places as a way to reconnecting with our spiritual and culture and informing the decisions about the management of Aboriginal places and sites. Our presence, present day ecological knowledge is derived from this direct experience with the natural world, built up over many of hundreds of generations. We teach our younger ones how to scar trees, take bark, carve and decorate. We take them camping and teach them where and how to harvest medicine plants, find grubs and the best places to go hunting and fishing. We only use the land in the way that will make provision for future needs. We use natural resources by making traditional objects and artefacts, fishing, hunting and gathering and using plants for medicinal purposes. But over the years our lands have been exploited and misused and our people driven off the land and away from their country. Unsustainable development changed fire regimes. Mining has changed the nature of the country and caused it to harm. We have a duty of care for our country and feel ashamed and sad that he's currently suffering. When the country suffers, we suffer. Yeah. We know the place where Mindy emerges. Mindy's our rainbow serpent. It is still sacred place to us, but sadly it is desecrated space. We believe we are an integral part of the ecosystem and value the balance of natural resources. When the country is sick, we are sick. But our connection to country is reinforced by our presence on country as we're here in front of you today. And our desire to care for country will always remain strong. I'm going to stand up too. <laughs> Thanks, son. Um, better voice projection. So, Narangek, everyone. My name is Rebecca, and I am a Jaja Wurundjeri. I'm a daughter, a sister, an auntie, a partner, a spiritual being, a learning song woman, a dancer, struggling to do both at the same time. Uh, I'm a fire keeper. I was a negotiator for our recognition settlement agreement. I'm a director on our Dada Wurong Clans Aboriginal Corporation Board. I'm a director on our Del Cunha Ja Land Management Board, which we're just about to launch our new joint management plan on the weekend. Plug, plug. Um, an advisor on our Kapagachin Water Advisory Board uh, and a reviver of our mother tongue. As a Jara woman, I have a role to care for country and continue the ceremonies my old people have been doing for centuries and longer. To speak the mother tongue, to continue to learn, to know country and share this knowledge with cultural integrity. My day job is uh, working for Jandak, which is um, our business arm of our corporation. And that is doing cultural burning and um, planting food and fibre plants back, back in our country and, you know, I take a bit of pride in that work because uh, for me that was a, a chance to, um, to decolonise some of our country where we lost those important Murnong, where we, um, all our edible plants were, were eaten up by the free grazing that happened. So it's good to be able to put them back in for our future generations to harvest and to continue those ceremonies. Jada Wurong Jaramang, Wartak Angalang, Kuninula Mora, Juima Baringandak, Gawang, Lalgombuk, Darangawa, Lianganuk, Goyura, Gorong, Lani Barumung, Lani Guri, Lani Galgal, Lala Bogawa, Yapanya, Bort, Nianga, Wuruna, Yerin, Bullock, Kolaban, Yangang, Yalakang, Bulitiang, Juima Baringandak. All of these places um, hold the name of uh, the name that, that was given um, to them 
about them or from them, from dreaming stories, and it explains uh, their place in our country. Jewel Mabarang Andak is that we affirm our connection to all of these places. We affirm our connection to Lani Baramu, Lani Wa, Lani Daja Gunditcha, the people and the lands of Bunjul and Wa. Jandak is our country. Jandak is a living entity that holds our songs and stories that are born from this land. They are embedded in the memory of these places and connect us all in a web that's unseen with the eyes. We have many stories of country, but mostly our country is just telling stories through us. Some stories are told through the ceremonies we conduct that spark and celebrate cycles and seasons within our country. Um, as you saw, uh, us dance um, the Gani Murnang, that's um, for Yem season. Um, our cultural life ways, our beliefs, our spiritual connection are our artistic expressions through mediums of painting, etchings, song, dance, ritual, and ceremony. And these mm -hmm. things were also um, our art forms that we traded with family, friends, um, and neighbours. Which brings us to our theme, sharing knowledge, trading resources, and exchanging gifts at a time of gathering and ceremony. But I wanted to talk a bit about how those things have changed. So we talk about them, how they happened in the past, but with our country as it's changed, um, so of our cultural practices, and I'll speak more on that later. But although we had the ability to exploit our environment as early migrants and modern society has, we had different drivers shaping our relationship with country and influence over it. That meant with this power comes great responsibility to all things and to our future generations. We know that Einstein had said, you know, that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Bless him. And we heard of the butterfly effect. We know of upstream, downstream implications, and yet there are still actions carried out on our country that have no consideration of the cause and effect implications on future generations. Bunjul's law states that we only take what we need from our country and if we must take more, we must give in return. In a time where there was no currency of coin, the natural resources provided by our Earth Mother and Sky Creator was our trade. Caring for country was our economy and we invested in it for our survival and for the survival of future generations. Abundant and diverse resources with the knowledge of how to utilise and manage it with the laws of sustainability, was our inheritance. Juama Jandak, to care for and to share. The way we traded emphasised equality amongst people where country could not be owned, as we understand the European term of ownership. We belong to our country and it belongs to us, as we belong to our family. We do not own our family or treat it as commodity. Today, we must also trade in culture in order for our cultural duties to fit into the modern world. Sometimes it's morally conflicting uh, to have to put a price on culture or your time to practice culture. But we must do this because we no longer live on our land for free. And we must pay rent as well. And we have to put food on the tables. Today, the currency we trade in puts a set of values on our natural resources that can be easily exploited by big business and international trade without accountability of the, for the survival of our future generations locally. Before there were banks and shares and crypto coin and all that, we ensure that our practices made the land healthy. The, the way we farmed with digging stick and fire, built up the topsoil so it was rich and fertile. Many generations had laid these foundations to which uh, migrants and um, others would reap the benefits in gold and agriculture. Leaving our country upside down, parched of water, 
once crystal clear, now dirty and contaminated and diverted on another path for a different purpose. Uh, when country isn't treated as your family, and you know not Bundel's law, it can be exploited without limitation and without consideration of all the other life forms dependent upon it, or the people unborn who will have to heal this wound. Today we must evolve our thinking to challenge and accommodate the new and foreign systems of society imposed on us and the preset values of exploitation within the system imposed on our country. Today we are trying to bring back some of the old ways of intimately working with the land that strengthens our connection and our relationships as once solid foundation, instrumental in forming and regulating responsibilities to country for the benefit of all. CEO of the Jar Jar Wurrung Clans Aboriginal Corporation. Um, it's aside from being a job, it's a responsibility um, that I feel extremely honoured uh, uh, to be doing uh, for my people in, in, as an executive officer, um, given hopefully the, uh, the introduction you've heard from Gooker and, and back about how we think as a people. Um, I wanted to just share with you a bit of uh, our knowledge and ways of thinking, um, refer to our art and uh, the woven connection to our country play. So creators will always make, it is by our nature, and we all have the ability to do something. As an individual, how skilled I am to cr create anything is based upon my existing capacity to put pen to paper, fingers to clay, a tool in my palm. How comfortable am I in myself with what I may perceive, what others will think, my ability to put that aside and not worry about what you think could hold back my creative outcomes. Our minds can race with ideas of what I can create. In my thoughts, it could be anything, and I will not be constrained by the physical world. It is then up to those that have been before and have seen what could be achieved to nurture others to create and to empower them. Over 200 years ago, experts managed this land. They did so through accepted scientific processes of observation. Observations not solely by inward looking in their analysis, but by lifeways and direct engagement with the landscape and the appropriate utilisation of the world's natural resources. The first peoples, Jara, of the Jandak, this land, are also the first modern peoples to undertake ceremony in any form and this is being confirmed through archaeology, physical anthropology, and even geomorphology. So for as long as we have been, we have practised our culture. We are modern people. As much as there's been a need for the practical nature of us as humans to make our life easier by the development of tools, there's been a cultural imperative, a creative need to adorn and symbolise ourselves and our objects. It is artistry in its finest form and brilliant in its communication. From the moment that I looked at a shield, and I'll place one uh, here for us to, to think about, and understood in my thinking that now I can actually see the shield, I've been truly amazed at all it can be. We perhaps understand its fundamental purpose based on the term we use to describe it as a shield. It defends us as one purpose of the tool, but it is much, much more. The variation of the stories in the line art is subtle, even delicate if we understand the people. We see their communication in the art. My people are interconnected through a social desire of fulfilment 
and a pleasure in what we achieve when we create and we must and we'll place our stories into and upon our cultural items and through the spoken and written word. We now look at culture, objects and jara more openly and see creation of individuality take form through the object's development in line, markings and colour, inseparably entrenched from its cultural foundations. The object displayed tells others who we are and where we come from. It is a banner in the true sense, to be proudly displayed. It is the distinctive heraldic bearings or shield of a person, family, corporation or country. It is Jara. There is even a necessity that it must be displayed because it sets the world right and reinforces a standard upon how we will engage with each other. A shield, my art, my adornment, tells you who I am. If this is where we have come from, it sets a strong foundation for the transmission of knowledge because you are now greater informed. As first people, Jara, we have the ability to connect to the past and how it may inform our future. But practically all of us, we have a view about our connections. My values are better than just embellished into world views. When others constructively and sympathetically turn their thoughts to who I am, as a Jara today, I want to communicate that connection and I want you to feel it. I would suggest my unchallenged continuation of my culture is where it is comfortable for me. And I want others to be comfortable also. And it is even seamless in what we may communicate. We are talking the same language. To state this, then it seems odd with how we understand the use of terms such as resurgence and reconstruction. But we use these types of words to help us capture the voids in our comprehension of looking at a shield as an example. It's an object. It's static. But it has a message which some would view as solely embedded in its form. I will propose that time has little or no relevance at all for our substance as a people and our continuation of culture. When Jara are looked at as a society and for all of our classical period, we are compared to the world's other societies in our evolution. The classical period is when the Jara were intruded upon. We are called Stone Age people, Stone Age culture. We're even looked upon curiously as to the many achievements in tool development, standards of shelter and our clothing. But if I, me, am comfortable with my world and my standards and which are of living and not about survival, the questions that others ask and the foreign values that are applied to who I am and seen as being offensive are put aside, they do not mean anything at all to me to inform my living which has achieved a degree of excellence. This is my ancestors' world. And I, Jara, will continue to apply this going forward. Thank you.
Barring, barring, money no one Going on my mind Going up, going up Barring, barring, money no one Going on my mind Going up, going up Those songs are words much older than us. <laughs> um, and we don't generally share that um, publicly. The words are, for us, and even in our culture, are ancient. They talk about our, our creators, the bunjul and the wa, and the law that they placed upon the earth. And that's our chant um, that we continue today um, to pay respect to the creators and our ancestors. So we just wanted to share that with you. Mm. So this is who we are and our cultural identity. These are our everyday struggles, our challenges, our concerns and aspirations and achievements for our country. These are some of our cultural knowledge gems that we share with you today. And what a great honour it is to have four Jara people giving a keynote express for Artlands on Jara country. Yeah, go on. <laughs> it's great because when uh, we were the first artists of this country, our ancestors, and I must acknowledge them and all of their struggles and hardships and their strength and resilience to overcome them. Otherwise, four of us wouldn't be sitting here. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to acknowledge, acknowledge them and pay our respects. Um, but we're not the first artists of our country. Our country is, is the best artist that we know, really. We look at the beautiful creations, the daily creations that we see. Nature is its own gallery that we learn from. We see these um, beautiful things about how nature expresses itself. From this old woman's tree. To even how we've modified, culturally modified our cultural landscape in order for um, us to have our own signposts guiding us through country. As you can see, I'm not sure if everyone has known of a grafted tree or ring trees, but this is where our people had uh, tied two branches together when the, the tree was much younger and they've grown together. So it's a, a symbol recognizable by the people traveling, meaning different things for different tribes. This is another cultural modification that you'll see in our cultural landscape. And it's obviously a scar tree. Um, well, the scar kind of has a negative connotation to it. Um, we haven't killed the tree and we've made something and utilized it. And this would be a canoe or um, a tarnuk, um, what we would carry fire, babies, water in, collect with. But then, you know, some of the values changed over time and I guess people didn't um, see these things as making uh, our cultural landscape rich with history and heritage. And this is another one of our journeys we go on looking after. But as Rodney had spoken, when we have um, taken from the land and created these beautiful things in its essence, other people saw the beauty in that. And often they were um, displayed like this all over the world. And we actually have one um, displaying it in the Bendigo Art Gallery right now, the Burke, from the Burke Museum. And these were all of our artifacts that were taken back in the 1850s, and some of them were even dug up out of burial grounds. Um, and, you know, this, this is confusing for us, but um, 
That's how our artifacts were displayed. It's a really great story, though, that this museum has decided, well, yeah, we, we don't own these things, but, um, and wanting to give them back to us to complete this story. And some of these things that we look at now, they're, um, they've added so many answers to the, the pieces of this puzzle. And one of them is this, this ancient basket that's about 150 years old, and people had never said that coil weaving had happened down here. It was mostly up in Northern Territory Aboriginal cultures. And since having this returned, we now have Annie Marilyn, a master weaver from here, who'd been saying this all along, we did coil weaving. She now has her proof right there. Yeah. <laughs> We're also artists in the cultural landscape with fire and burning is something that is definitely crucial to the health of our land. And we live in a, um, a fire-prone and fire-dependent country. And um, in the past, the views of fire have been tainted with uh, a lot of destruction without the balanced perspective that it's also a part of creation, if managed well. <laughs> Another part of our cultural practice that has changed over time, where we are now having to salvage the things that we once traded. Uh, this is a piece of chakalite, which is only found here in Jada Warong country, um, a metamorphic stone from a meteorite that hit here. And it's a beautiful black glass, and it's not a good picture of it. But when we find this, we know um, even when it's in other countries that they've traded with us. And these, that forms part of our, our beautiful story um, of our connections with, with our neighbours and um, what they valued from our country and so on. This is, um, this is actually just an old log that I thought was beautiful and worthy of, of showing. But also um, <laughs> because you can see how our... Um, designs really are showing the essence of our country. As is our language. And I think I'm supposed to sing a song now too. Um, but my song isn't old. I sang an older one when we were cleansing country while dancing. That is one um, recorded. Um, our old people chanting at Franklin Ford Mission. Um, but it was a modern song for the time. And so it's really great to be able to sing those, those songs that our ancestors once did. But I have a new song, and this is it. We have old stories, new songs, and new dances. And some things were traded down through our cultural, um, our cultural knowledge, our traditional ecological knowledge, and things being passed down. Sometimes when we didn't have access to country, they'd just be passed down in the kitchen over a gubberty. So I just would like to share this new old creation story song. <laughs> um, so if you like, maybe close your eyes and um, see if I can take you on a journey. As a... Yeah, Malamia da bundol workang kunga Lala bagawa gatin we kalka Morandal ta Munalabik, Munalabik, Munalabik Baika Murniang Dandaki Baker da del cob moro Karinga gore warpo Baker da del cob moro Karinga baramo wa Baker da del cob moro Baker da moron papja Naldorong yana jara Nanila bundu 
monalabik, monalabik, monalabik. Barem ba warpul mungkin, undur mungkin burangi wila. Undur mungkin burangi wila. Long ago, Bunjul brought country to life. The stony mountains, the water, the fire and trees. This is living good country. And dust of the ochre. Rise up our living country. Rise up our country spirit. Grow healthy that kangaroo and that eagle. Rise up good country spirit. Grow healthy the inu and the raven. Grow our living mother earth and walk together people. Listen to Bunjul's law. Then bundle with the dust of the ochre, change into the wedge tail eagle and fly up into the night sky campfire. Well, I'm going to continue a yarn with you. So hopefully the stuff in between with what I was proposing earlier, trying to get people into opening their minds to thinking, we'll do part two. Um, Trent's helping me, tell him the shield. So now I am the shield in all its glory. I am the message that it conveys. It is seamless. It has never stopped. It never will. And the forms that we see in art and words are a testament to that. They are of an importance and significance of what has been made before and are timeless in my living culture for Jara now and in the future. Forms today are also as much about being for the creators of the past as the forms created previously have been made for me today. The use of the term renaissance as revival can be as simple as picking up. So if time is not a consideration, then the picking up of my culture is about placement. The object and the message is positional in our thinking. The ideas of time not limited my connection, and that can also be applied for distance. And we may appear separated, but we can afford an opportunity in our thinking to those that have created before to just pick it up culturally. So notions of separation, whether distance or time, need not be considered. And with all of life's, uh, modern life's complexities, to not be affected. We cannot be disconnected through time or space from who we are today to what my ancestors are still today. To, supply, uh, to apply some of our thoughts around this, it is assisted by the thinking of the diamond, which could be placed upon a shield. It has a beginning. This is the first diamond. And now I add more each one greater than the first. Eventually I have no more space and the three-dimensional object now holds a two-dimensional visual representation of three dimensions. What it communicates is no longer visually constrained to the object like its message. It now extends beyond. There can be comfort for us if we do not challenge our thinking but the diamond extends beyond the object. Its connectivity is safe, with security to its beginning and to all that need to see it, to tell others who I am. The lines and the symbols I view upon a shield in the story that they tell never end. But when others view, they, seem, they are seen to be constrained upon the object. They are placed. I can still appreciate its beauty with how 
I want to think, but I can also see it as a communicative tool. I hope as Jara speak to you today, we can all have in our thinking a greater capacity to simplify our analytical processes and to not overly ask ourselves too many questions and be accepting of what it is. It is just my culture. And I do not use the word just in terms of value, but it is used to emphasise it is what it is. It worked. It still works. It isn't broken. It never will be. We cannot measure it, but we have heard it said popularly, it is the oldest living culture on earth. And now, with the words that we've shared with you, you can think, isn't that an unusual statement? Because from a Jara perspective, my culture um, is now. I cannot apply that thought because since its genesis, it has always been given. What it was before is what it is now, and it will always be the same. In cultural terms, I just need to pick it up. My culture and traditions are what I and my people choose them to be. And I use the term classical period to define the moment of cultural intrusion, to only make others feel more comfortable when they apply foreign values to my people's culture. But all societies change. One of my people's strengths has been our adaption to our environment. So we have now adapted to what it is. This frees us potentially from survival to a better place which is living, following the footsteps of our ancestors from the creators of the forms of our art, song, dance and caring for country and people provides us a fantastic opportunity to explore the oldest continuing culture on earth. I'm appreciative to have had an opportunity to share my culture with my kin uh, today and my thoughts. And we wish you Dalkup Murupuk, good spirit. Thanks, Rodney. What you've heard from Rodney and from Beck and seen the images up on the screen. And can you turn your phone off, please? Thank you. Message stick. Message stick. Yeah. It's our message stick. <laughs> you see the image that was previously on the screen of the shield that had the, the diamond patterns cut into it, that had a white powder through it, that ochre. That shield we just recently, as Beck said, we got back on country with other items. To us, they're not just items. They're not, this isn't just a, a shield, a thing, something you can pick up and it's tangible. These items are, are things that our ancestors made and they held deeply within their hearts. They tell us the stories of our ancestors. They take us back in time. We time travel when we see these things, when we pick them up. And we feel them for the first time when they're back here on Jandak, on our country. It immediately transcends us back to touching them with our old people, hand in hand. Those items, many of our items that have been taken off us illegally over the presence of our ancestors, it's our right as their descendants to work as hard as we can to get them back on country, back home where they belong. They don't belong in a box. They don't belong in a drawer. They don't belong in France or England. They belong back here in central mm. Victoria on Jajarang Jara country where they were made, where they were crafted, where those stories of why they were crafted 
hold deep with inside the same as this shield. It's important for you to know that because what we do as we've spoken today across our country we see our cultural heritage being desecrated our scar trees our mitch the bark that gets taken off those our old people took that bark off for a purpose when they needed another canoe or a shield or a shelter they found another tree didn't mean that new tree was more significant than the last one but what they knew is that they could take the bark off a tree and they could still keep that tree alive and give it life without killing it today in everything we do in the modern world we don't look that way we don't think that way we think what we can we get out out of that resource the resources on our country on jara country are resources that were sacred to our people and they were sacred to our neighbors as well our greenstone that was found on country our quartz which today is scattered all over the gold fields because it was ripped out of the ground for the gold that was inside of it our old people saw the gold and picked up golf ball sized nuggets and threw them aside because they were no value to our people our people needed quartz needed the hard stone not the soft stuff like the gold that's how it all started here with the gold rush is greed the other thing we struggle with here is bringing our old people back on country and by that i mean bringing our ancestors back over the last 10 odd years i've done a lot of repatriations in this country and I've done it with people sitting up here with me my brothers and my sisters and my aunties and my elders and my uncles if you can imagine bringing back someone of your family on country and being handed a shoebox and saying there you go we're righting the wrong because we're giving that back to you not an easy thing to do when you can't find that sacred place that ceremonial ground where that old person was rightfully laid to rest through their clan through their family the song that that Beck sung the song that Rodney sung those songs were sung for that person to lay them to rest unfortunately we have to create new songs to lay them people to rest again for us it's the best way for us to move forward to teach our kids that that's what's right and that's what we need to do to move forward on this country one day our kids will grow up and they won't have to worry about the sadness that happened but the important thing about that is that they they understand it they hold it within their heart and that the wider community understand that too and they walk together as one our neighbors share our stories as well bless you <laughs> <laughs> you too guy. <gone. laughs> I try. <laughs> our neighbors share our stories. Because I'm up here as a judge young man through my great great grandfather. But through my great great grandmother I share other clan groups 
across Victoria. Those other clan groups tell us stories as well. Now, I can waffle on all day. I can keep talking to you, Mark. Can't I write that? Can't I write that? Um, but the importance is, is that today you went through the right protocol with our people. You've witnessed a tiny glimpse of our culture, our heritage. We have traded with you songs and gifts of that smoke that's with you. When you walk on someone's country, you need to understand that because country isn't just a landform that you walk on. It's everything that's tangible and intangible. So well done. Mm. So So all you beautiful artist, artistic people out there, um, we're glad to have you here. Mm. And while you're on your stay, may you walk with the endurance of the emu, Baramu. May you walk with the protection of the echidna spines. May you have the vision of the eagle, Warpu. May you dance like the brolga, Korchen. Sing like the magpie, Goruk. Do that, really. Um, <laughs> and may you have the wisdom of the tawny frog mouth on your stay. I'm back as an important person. <laughs> No name. Balaki. Urukang. Kimbayang. Wukch. Jara. Bundu. Delka. Murupu. Neldurong, Yana. What I've just said to you in Jajwaram language is we thank you for your listening to our mob's talk at Ulumbara, this gathering place. And we hope you learned something from our cultural knowledge. And now we wish you good spirit as we walk together on Bulger's country. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.